Welcome, my peeps, my peoples. Please like, comment, subscribe, share the video. It would be greatly appreciated. It's Mary Jane. Let's talk about Love and Hip Hop New York Season 9, Episode 4. Let's get into it. It goes down. We see Mano struggles. We see Maggie struggles. It's like, whoa. We see Jonathan, you know, basically just getting into it with the women. Like, he can't stand. He can't stay from arguing with a woman. And, like, Jonathan is way too much. Jonathan is all in there. Then we got Kyan and Jaquay going at it. She says, that he can't rap he's whack he was like well i write rhymes and i stay on the radio and we got safari's all shocked because somebody's talking shit saying that omg that you know you set up that robbery a lot of people did think that but the person that robbed safari is locked up so we have that situation. I'm just like, what is going on? Then we got Yandy at the beach with some shrimps and a hot ass sun. Like, what's going on? <laughs> and they're uncovered. You know, they're just out there in the open for the bugs and for everything to get on top of them. I'm just like, whoa. <laughs> oh, OMG. Like, it was crazy. And then we got to see Maggie's brother and, you know, him being a di having diabetes, a diabetic, you know, going blind, being paralyzed at a young age, too, as well. It was like, damn, that was just. Just heartfelt and just seeing Maggie's story about her PTSD don't want to be around a lot of people don't want to be in big crowds I was just like it's a whole different thing like whoa it's crazy so let's get started let's start off with Mano He's, he's he lets us know he's been with Maggie for like two years and change or whatever. And they talk about the Irvin Plaza shooting, which was like a sad event, which is a crazy event. I think actually T.I. was throwing the event. There should have been more security. They had the cameras, but they didn't have the protection. Somebody should have broke up the fight between, you know, Tax Stone, um... Uh, what's his name Troy Av and then his best friend like damn if somebody could have gotten a mix of somebody could have picked up that gun and just got you know just got the situation just like you know totally as soon as as soon as the argument and people getting rowdy just broke it up ask everybody to leave because damn Maggie's suffering you have tax stone is locked down in jail you have Troy Av he got shot too as well he lost his best friend and now people calling Troy Av a snitch because he's gonna get on the stand and testify why wouldn't he not testify because if he doesn't testify that you know basically you know they're saying that allegedly tax stone is saying that you know troy av is the one that shot his best friend we all seen the footage of where you know troy av was coming out of that place alive and he was just shooting like crazy it was like he was in a video game and he got up out of that life he might be talking about that gangster shit but he ain't talking about that gangster shit no more when his life was on line but he was able to get out of that building but his friend did it and then his friend getting killed at the at the um, event at the urban plaza event you know that went left hill for troy av because then his best friend's family came at troy av you know talking bad about troy av saying this about troy av and all this other stuff so it just been a whole massive of negative events that happened from that one night if somebody could have stopped if somebody didn't show up somebody wasn't there like it was like damn we see maggie and you know Troy Aff, you know, not Troy Aff, but, you know, Tax Stone, his podcast, and what he was doing with Bevel and everything else, he was blowing up, like, things were, things were looking good for him, too, as well, it was looking good for everybody, because Troy Aff was basically, Troy Aff was basically coming up, and people was just like, you know, he was getting that respect, especially with using the word widow and all that other stuff, but he just went left hill at that event, and it was just like, damn, somebody could have just intervened and stopped it, security could have came, you know, something, but it just went, totally around array it was just really bad so at this time you know uh manos he's having a party at his house basically you know um joe button shows up with with sin with his son and then we have you know um What's her name? Yandy. She shows up with her children too as well. Everybody's having a good time. She's talking to Maggie. And she's and at this time and point, you know, Yandy wants to have, you know, a beach event and stuff like that. Then you have Mano and Joe having a conversation where Mano's actually giving Joe Buttons props that, you know, he changes around. He's like the Howard Stern of the hip hop. You know, basically the talk show host. He's a guru and everything else that he's doing right now with his podcast, with, you know, just hosting different shows and it's just like damn it's a good thing that he did leave everyday struggle because look it's like everything there's nothing unlimited to joe buttons at this time right now so you know mano's talking about he needs to reinvent himself too as well because he needs to keep making that money he needs to keep making them checks because he's taking care of his girlfriend and her brother that is paralyzed and, and you know blind and sick too as well sorry for 
everything that you're going through, Julia, Julius, that is really like, my heart went out to you, Julius, but you've still got like a positive, you're still positive, you're still, you know, even being filmed on TV, so kudos to you, Julius, and, um, Mayno has to take care of his mom. His mom is in and out of the hospital. She's sick. He has a brother that's in, a brother that's in the feds that he probably got to pay for. You know, court put money on his books and make sure you know situation is set because he knows how it is to be locked up. So we have a whole lot going on, and Mayno wants to keep making money, keep making money the legit way, the efficiency way, the way that he won't get locked up and go to jail too as well. And basically, he got a lot on his shoulders, and you know he. His girlfriend Maggie moved in with with him after the shooting, and he's take and he's taking care of her brother too that's living in the house. You know he's taking care of him, lifting him up to putting him in a bed because he's paralyzed, so he's gonna need assistance too as well. And that's wonderful. That speaks volume of Mano. You know we see a lot of negative things about Mano being hardcore, being in the streets, being in solitary. But we get to see this side of Mano where he's loving, he's caring, he's passionate. But you can already always see that in Mano too as well. You can tell he's a deep individual, especially when he did that Letter to Tupac song. I was like, shit, you know, he's from New York and he's doing a Letter to Tupac. I was like, yo, when he did one, I was just like, it's off the chain. Especially when Fado did the Letter to Tupac you know, it's a rap song or whatever. So it's on YouTube. You guys can check it out. So, you know, he has a lot on his plate. And basically, you know, Joe's like, yeah, yeah. You know, basically Joe's living good. Like, yo, Joe blew up in the... After everyday struggle, his stock went up. But everyday struggle, he was able to show the world what he was working with, his knowledge, his sense. You know, he had moments. He knows how he knew how to be creative. He knew how to create moments too as well. He knew everything that the people wanted to see, and Joe Buttons done gave it to us. And I don't know if it would have been that easy if Tax Stone was still here in the street, but you know, Tax Stone and Joe Buttons had a little bit of a um disagreement but they end up you know making up and being friends and being cool at this being cool at the end so that was cool and then we move on to Jaque Jaque and we got Safari and we got Nye Lee. Basically, you know, they're at some shit that's outside. Things the Safari is throwing a cookout with all these fake actors and they didn't know anybody else that was there at that party. And so um Safari was like, yo, I invited I invited, you know, Cayenne. Cayenne's coming through, whatever. Jacoy was like, Yeah, you know, I post this about her, I post that about her. I was trying to shoot my shot and all this other stuff. So he's it looks like Jacquay is still interested in being with, you know, Cayenne. Cayenne shows up and basically, you know, she starts to talk to Jacquay and she was just like, basically, Jacquay, don't oh, you gonna you gonna hit me up on Instagram, then you're gonna block me, then you're gonna say you want me. And she was like, Yo, you just you just doing nothing but clout chasing. Like I'm feeling it, bro. And she lets us know that on the day of her birthday, Jacque celebrated with her, but at night he went somewhere else and had some some birthday sex with somebody else. And now her I was like, damn. Didn't Kayan supposed to get birthday sex with her, from her boyfriend, from her man? You know, they was dating. They had they party together. And he went home to a hotel with somebody else with another girl. Of course, she's pissed. Of course, she's upset. And depends on how she found out. How did she find out that Jacque on her the, the night of her birthday was with another woman? OMG, that the, yo, that's crazy. I know you guys probably know, but I don't know how she found out about that. And she's upset. But Jacque was like, yo, why are you putting on from the cameras? Who put, who put a battery in your back? Who told you to act like this? Why are you acting like this stuff? Like, shorty, you acting mad strange. Like, Jacquay's making it seem like, you know, Cayenne is doing this for TV. The producers put a battery in her back or whatever. I don't know if they did or not. But basically, she's going in on Jacquay. And then she lets Jacquay know that you can't rap. Because she was kind of like rapping at him a little bit. And, and she was like, oh, he was like, so we're going to have a rap battle or whatever. So we're going to battle rap or whatever. And she was like, you can't rap. And I was like, oh, shit, she told Jacque she, he can't rap. But she was just trying to be mean or whatever because I have heard her say that Jacque can rap recently. Not recently, like maybe two months ago or whatever. When she came out and said that, you know, Jacque was bisexual and whatever. And, you know, you got that situation with, like, probably him having sex with another girl on her birthday and then finding out that he's bisexual. I don't know how she found out. Did he, I think she said he told her or whatever. I did do a video about it, but I don't remember. And then we had Sophia the Body come out and agree and say Jacque is bisexual. Then we had Jacque come out and say that Cayenne was in a relationship with a woman and she did dabble in the woman pond too as well. So who was she throwing shots at? So, and then we got Cayenne saying that the reason...
reason why she exposed Jaque because he exposed her first. So we got this like this little kitty shit going on. I was like, damn. And so then, you know, um, Cayenne was like, well, you know what? You need to tell Safari what you said about him. Safari, you know, Jaque has been talking about you. He's been saying shit about you. He's, a, he's been doing this. He's been doing that or whatever. Make, make Jaque tell you what he said. Basically, she feels Jaque is fake. He laughs, he laughs and grinning your face and talk behind your back. And before you can leave the, the scene, he's already taking shots and throwing, <laughs> and throwing shots at you. And so I was just like, damn, it's like that. I, so I guess it is like that. And so security got to get in because, you know, Cayenne, she's yelling. She's getting upset. You know, Cayenne is a rowdy cheek chick. Like, you know, she got she runs rough and stuff with her Afro puff. She's ready to punch you. She's ready to fight. She's ready to get all hood on you in two, three seconds, milliseconds. She's ready to go in. And that's just how she gets down. Like, she's, all, she's real tough. Like, you know, she's real thick around the edges. And she ain't here for no bullshit at all. And she was ready to go all the time. She's ready to go. But she said she was going to work on that last season. But I guess, you know, she's in pain. She's hurt by Jaque because I think she really did care for him. And for him to have sex with somebody else on her birthday, that's foul. And how, however she found out is even, probably even more foul. The way that she found out that her man was out here with another chick. I was just like, damn. So we have that situation and so we have Yandy she's having her little beach thing or whatever and she invites the ladies and she got them shrimp sitting out there in the hot sun you know that shit's gonna go bad so anyways I'm, unless I'm wrong but anyways so you have Yandy Yandy's out there then we have Maga she comes through and then we have Juju she comes through with her bathing suit and everything that she had on looks so pretty and so she comes through and then she's she's here. She don't know who Yandy's going to invite. Because her and Yandy right now are on good terms. They're cool with each other. But the situation is who else is going to show up? Is Jonathan going to show up? But no, we get Anais. Anais comes through looking crazy. I don't know what's up with Anais' wigs. I don't know what's up with her face. It looks like she picks her wigs up out the trash. She picks them from under the bed, under the closet, from the laundry hamper. I don't know what she be doing with them wigs. She just be looking like she's tired. She's worn out. You know, I hope she ain't on drugs and I hope she ain't sick. You know what I'm saying? So I don't want you to take too much, say too much about her because I don't know if she's sick. She could be sick, man. And sick and being sick and trying to work at the same time and keep that shit privately is probably difficult for her to do too as well because we've seen what K. Michelle went through and everything. So we get on from that situation and then so... um. Everyone leaves and Juju and, you know, Anais talk. Anais, this is the most mature I've ever seen on Anais. She apologized. She said she was sorry up front for what happened at Jonathan's party. And so, you know, Juju accepted, accepted the apology. But Juju also had to say, well, because I think, you know, um, Anais said, well, you know, it wasn't an ambush. I wasn't trying to come at you. You said this, you said that. And, and, and I think that's when Juju was like, well, you know, I wouldn't have said anything. And I wouldn't have been upset if you didn't come at me like the way that you did. So I had to say something or whatever. So we have that situation. And so basically, they seem like they're kissing and making up. But Anais. Anais is throwing shots at Jonathan and saying that Jonathan was talking about you at this little luncheon that we had. It was me, Kim Bella, Sin, and you wasn't there to defend yourself. And Jonathan was going, and me and Jonathan are not friends or whatever. But we know um, Jonathan and Anais are friends. They break up to make up all the time. That's just how their relationship is. And um, so she was like, Anais was like, I ain't going to tell you what he said because, you know, I ain't the one to run my mouth. You ain't heard it from me. I might have been looking out the window. I might have been seeing it. But I ain't telling you what's going on. And so basically, Anais is trying to throw Jonathan under the bus. With Jonathan did not say anything bad about Juju at that luncheon. You know, he basically went at Anais. And Anais ambushed, you know, Juju. It makes him look bad. Like how she came at Juju was rude, disrespectful, and all this other stuff. And, um... And basically, he said, only thing Jonathan did say was he needs to tell Juju how he feels about her, you know. And he wanted to tell Juju how he felt about her after his birthday party. He was going to talk to her. And basically, you know, he wasn't throwing Juju under the bus at that event. He just argued with Kimbella or whatever. And Kimbella confronted him. Like, well, you called her fake. You called her this and you called her that. He was like, yeah, I know I did. But I was going to address that afterwards. I didn't want to address it at my birthday or whatever. And so, that, that, so un <coughs> excuse me. So, Anais is actually, you know, trying to stir up the pots. Trying to stir up the drama. Trying to stir up the trouble. You know, Anais. Oh. 
So we have that situation. Then we also find find out that Maggie has a bullet in her leg, you know. And we have Mayno that wants to take her out to the Barclay Center to watch a boxing fight or whatever. And she's she's not sure if she wants to go. And then we have, you know, because she's really fighting with her PTSD. She's with her brother. Her brother's advising her to go, saying that you used to live your life. You didn't live your life in fear. Like, you really should try it out. For him to be so supportive and emotionally there for his sister. And the way that she's dependent on her older brother, you know, mentally more than physically. It's just like, it's a good relationship too as well. And so we see what Maggie's going through. Imagine what, you know. What's his name? Troy Affields. He was shot a couple of times. So, you know, we think that these people, you know, get shot and they keep moving. But they probably be suffering PTSD and scared and nervous. And then on top of that, you know, uh, Mano blames himself too as well. Because he wished that if he didn't bronco there, if she didn't go there with him, they was on their first date or whatever. So... And so basically he feels guilty. So I'm just wondering, does he really love Maggie or his heart? Or do he just feel guilty about her having a bullet in her leg and her being, and her like being crippled or walking with a limp that he feel like he feels like it's totally his fault. And he's going to take her, her to the end because Mano's one of them dudes. If he messed up, like say, if you die and your family's over here and he's, and he's bond with you, Mano's the person that will always take care of your family. Like, his family, your family would be one of his bills that he would have to do. Like, so, he would have to take care of and he would have to pay for. So, I don't know if Mano feels really guilty and that's why he's doing all this for her or is he just really in love with Maggie and he's really hurt by that because you can be hurt and, and, you know, want the best for your partner, especially if, you know, something happened to them because you brought them somewhere. And that's how he feels like he brought her to that rap, that concert. He brought her to the um, urban plaza. You know, he was her date. And she's a young female. She should never have to deal with this type of, you know, energy or whatever. And then we also, what about Gunplay's girlfriend that was shot too as well? You know, I love and hip hop Miami. So they might... We didn't see, like, the intimate details of how she felt about being shot, but we see how Maggie feels about being shot and what she's going through. And so Mano's trying to encourage her to come out, be around people, because she doesn't like to be in public places, big um, spaces and stuff like that, especially being at the Barclays Center. She's afraid that, you know, the exits are too far away. And that's something that sometimes people do think about. I think about that, like, where's the nearest exit? I want If there's only one door, I want to be sitting next to the door that... Everybody goes in and out. So, we have that situation. So, it's, it's sad. You know what I mean? It's really sad because she's a nice, pretty girl to us. And, I'm, and, and, it's, and it is, you know, nice to see Mano with a girl with, you know, a deep, deep melanin, you know. It's really nice to see on one of these shows, somebody's dating somebody with deep, deep melanin, <laughs> melanin you know, you know. So it's good to see that too as well. And but she is young. Mano is kind of up there, but Mano still looks good for his age, word life. And so moving on from that situation. So now we got Nile, we got Safari, and um and every whoever else is there. And Cayenne. Oh no, we got Nile and Safari. And then Cayenne meets up with them and basically tell them that, you know, Jaquay's been talking shit about them, been talking shit about, you know, Safari and saying the Safari robbery was a setup like he did it for a insurance scam. And and basically also, you know, um, Cayenne is also saying that um, Jaquay is taking credit for all the music that, you know, um, Safari has put out there that basically he's doing all the writing and Safari ain't helping or contributing at all. So if that's the case, that means Safari never was writing for Nikki and Safari did tell the truth that he never did write for Nikki. So Jaquay is doing all the writings allegedly for Safari and you know, Cayenne is throwing him under the bus and she's saying everything like, and I understand that she's hurt. She's been through a lot, especially finding out that your man is bisexual and you didn't sign up for something like that. That is shocking. But then and on, on the other case, you know, he's saying that she's bisexual. I don't know. And me personally, I wouldn't go out. I wouldn't go out my way to tell people, oh, this, when I was in a relationship with Jack, um, Jack said this about you. Jack did this. This is what Jack thought about you. Jack said this. Jack said that. Because at one point in time, we had that trust. We had that communication. And you told me in privately and you told me in confidence. So I wouldn't be advertising what you told me to people to make them turn against you or be your friend or not be your friend. Because ultimately, 
you telling the people what he said or what he did behind closed doors is because you want them to react to the situation and plus you want them to know the truth too as well. I don't know if I would take that route. Like I have to really hate the person and want any smoke that this person's going to bring me because when you do shit like that, it comes back to you or you can end up having like a beef. You know, they'll go get their sisters, they'll go get their brothers and then you're constantly in conflict and you constantly got to look up look out for yourself look over your back look o look over your shoulder just like you have to do anyway because you got to stay you got to be aware of the police you got to be aware of people that want to take from you or want to take what you have because you know it is it, a doggy dog world so I, I wouldn't be I wouldn't be doing what Cayenne is doing period but me and Cayenne are two different people and we're in a different age group and even when I was her age, I never did no shit like that. When I found out anybody was doing anything wrong to me or whatever, we broke up. I wasn't advertising. Oh, this person said this. This person wanted to do this. Like, I, once I'm done with you, I'm done with you. You don't need to roll off my lips, roll off my tongue. And if we have to work together, we just got to work together because I'm going to get my bread. I'm not going to let you or nobody else stop me from getting my bread. But I'm not going to entertain no bullshit. So anyways, moving on, moving forward. And so, you know, and Safari was like, mm, and Nia Lee is like, mm. So I'm thinking Nia Lee, whatever her name is, Nia Lee, Nia Lee, whatever, she is like cool with, you know, Jaque or whatever, I, but I guess she's more cool with Safari because I would think that she would go tell, you know, um, Jaque, give him the heads up and be like, yo, this is what Cayenne is saying about you. And Safari feels a certain type of way about the situation. So maybe you should go talk to Safari. Or maybe she's just minding her business and going to let it rock. Because I, I, to me, I think, you know, um, Jaque had her back when it came to Sydney Star. You know what I'm saying? So, it, it is what it is. So, moving on from that, we get to the boxing. Mayno's supposed to be taking his girl to the boxing match. He doesn't take her there. He ends up taking her to the block, to the um, urban plaza or whatever where the shooting begun. And, you know, she has a little breakdown. She calls, uh, not a little breakdown, but she has a breakdown. She calls her brother and then she ends up going in the building and basically trying to, you know, Mayno wants her to heal, move forward and move and move on because she's going to have to be in cross and be around people to get back working, you know, to, you know, go places with her man because he's around a bunch of people. So, but anyways, you know, it's good to see Mayno in this light because the last time I seen Mayno, he was harassing little Kim when she was getting the key to the city from the mayor and that was like real awkward like Mayno looked like a real like predator in that situation so it's good to see him in this situation with you know Maggie or whatever because that little Kim situation was like whoa Mayno you giving me predator teeth baby so moving on from that so she's so she's talking about it. She really felt like she could she she possibly could have lost her life, and yes, she could have lost her life, and she did, and she's here. So it's time, and so hopefully she can move on and fight through this, so she doesn't let this negative situation control her for the rest of her life. And so even though she's gonna have that bullet to remind her that, remind her of the situation. So we have that. Then we have Jack Quay. He's having a party. His um, Sheen John's party. Basically, he's been the face for a couple of years. Wearing their clothes or whatever. So he's chilling at the event. He's having a good time. You know, Nia Lee's there. Safari's there. And it seems like everything's cool or whatever. And so then that's when... And Sin is there too as well. And so then that's when, you know... So, um, so, uh, you know, Jack Quay is feeling like something's odd. What's going on? And then that's when, you know, Safari was like, yo, I heard you said this about me, about that my, my, me being robbed was an insurance scam and all this other stuff. And, you know, the dude's in jail or whatever. And so Jack Quay was like, yo, why are you entertaining what my ex said? Like, yo, for real, this is an event for me and for us to be cool and have a good time and all this is going on. And so Jack Quay was like, you know what? You're going to listen to what the ex says. And so basically he's just like, whatever, I'm done. So he moves forward <laughs> and he leaves the situation. And so we have Juju and Jonathan meet up. They meet up. And basically, so now they're going to get down to the nitty gritty. And they don't really go anywhere because Juju doesn't want to talk about the podcast situation. Jonathan doesn't want to talk about calling her fake and phony. And calling her fake as a $2 bill. When $2 bills you can spend in the store, baby. So... We have that situation. We have Juju talking about, well, Anai said this and that. She was like, and so Juju feels like that it was an ambush that she was set up. And Jonathan has admitted last episode that that he felt that, you know, Juju was going to feel like it's an ambush, that it was a setup. So when he asked Juju, Juju was like, yeah, I felt like it was an ambush and a setup. 
And as no, so when she said I felt like I was ambushed, so you know, Jonathan already knows that she's gonna feel like she was ambushed because he mentioned it last episode, but he's not taking accountability for it by saying, I know it felt like an ambush, but it, it shouldn't have been. I, I, I it wasn't it wasn't my intent for that to happen. And so he was like, Well, if you feel like it's an ambush, then you feel like I want to set you up. So he had to take it a whole nother way. He couldn't just say, I understand how you feel like it was an ambush because I would feel the same way. Because he said earlier it was an ambush last episode. And so we have that situation. And he was like, So you feel like I would set you up? Then, you know, you feel like I would set you up. What you think? Blah, blah, blah. You know, so Jonathan was going his going off doing his thing and he was like yo how i really felt let's talk about this podcast thing the situation where you kept quiet and secretive and you're secretive about that and you didn't let me in you didn't tell me what was going on or whatever and she was like no let's not talk about the podcast let's talk about you calling me fake and phony so she doesn't want to address the situation of how she got to deal with the podcast when jonathan said that was his dream and that's why he's really upset with her and that's why he really thinks that she's fake and phony so that's pretty much it I was just like, damn. And so, you know, um, he's just like, it's, it's just like, it don't make any sense why they just can't like settle it. Like, because he was like, yo, I, it, what he was like, D I didn't even invite you. You know, he was like, would you invite it? And, and she was like, no, I wasn't invited. And I hit her right there. And she was just like, oh, Juju was like, yeah, I wasn't invited. But, yo, you know, Anais was there. She came at me. Jonathan was like, listen, I told, I got into Anais' ass. I got into Kim Bella's ass. And he was like, yeah, I was wrong. I, want, I wanted to tell you how I felt after my birthday party. But you end up showing up at the birthday party. You confronted me or whatever. So Jonathan did say he wanted to talk to Juju after the party. And so then Jonathan was like, how come you didn't tell me that you felt like you were set up there? In. like he was she was like i haven't seen you he was like she he was like well you could have called me it's like they got each other's number because they were supposed to go together and do a deal and be a radio host or whatever so we have that situation so peace them out when love tell me what you think about the situation i'm just like jonathan be going in but you know juju jonathan's makeup matches it had match juju makeup because she had on pink they both had on pink and so right now, Juju was upset. They ain't getting nowhere with the conversation. So she gets up and she walks away. That's what it is. Peace.